You know, I always see some things never change, and this time it's something different, because we don't see the map Falls of Aizen today guys, but we're gonna see the reskin of Falls of Aizen, the Falls of Anduin, between goblins against men of the west, good against evil, between two great players. Before further ado, let's get it started. On the right side of the map we have the blue goblin player Entauron, and his opponent at the left side of the map is the green man of the west player AOW Luxus. Starting with one farm and potentially a barracks. And also cave pads are being used from the goblin player for scouting purposes. The barracks is coming up for the man of the west player indeed, and he is picking up the human wood first from the spellbook. He doesn't need to use it now because he already knows that he is against goblins because he was able to see, to see, um, to see the cave pads. And he can also save the human wood for later on when he's about to attack, because human wood is gonna increase the armor of the allied units on top of that by 35%. On the other side, we see two farms start into the spider pit from the goblin player in Tauron on the right side of the map. The barracks is gonna be coming up way faster, and that means the units from the Man of the West player are gonna join the battlefield also faster than from the goblin player in Tauron. And yeah, Forts of Anduin is a real skin for Forts of Aizen, it looks better in my opinion. The design of the water, I like it. The design overall is looking much much better than the, out, than the outdated map for of Aizen, which is still the most played map in the universe of Middle Earth. Another farm is coming up for the Man of the West player now, he has two farms around the fortress, now one more coming up next to the barracks. On the other side, the goblin player has two tunnels so far, as far as I can see, and he might build some offensive tunnels now like he did at the top side of the map. Alright, the soldiers are moving forward guys, let's see how much damage they will be able to deal, remember and keep in mind that the human wood is still available for the Man of the West player. The builder has to be careful, he is taking some damage but it's nothing too crazy, I think he is trying to buy some time until the spiderlings are gonna arrive on the battlefield, but he has to be careful, you don't wanna risk the biscuits because you might potentially end up dying. Oh 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 hey hey! Oh, that was close. This guy is playing with fire, guys. <laughs> that was close, but maybe even calculated. Who knows? Alright, Spiderlings, they should be able to deal with those soldiers. Human wood is gonna be used. Aggressive stance for more DPS against the tunnel. You already know that buildings in BFME 2 are way squishier than in Rise of the Witch King. With that being said, the soldiers of Gondor, they will be able to take down one of the most important and one of the starting tunnels from the goblin player in Tauron. Alright, uh, one more soldier battalion is moving forward, uh, I think the second tunnel is gonna be taken down next. On the other side the spiderlings are moving forward, but they have to now deal with some tower guards and they can't fight against them in a 1v1 situation at least. And yeah, they might try to take down the farm, the barracks is now level 2, has 5000 HP and he is even going for the barracks level 3, which is not gonna make the building tankier and make it work like a tower, it will be able to shoot at the enemy units. But also, the production speed is gonna be 25% faster. So your, your units are gonna come on the field 25% faster, which is always nice. Alright, uh, the tunnel here has been actually taken down as well. But the goblin faction, after you know your building get destroyed, you will have a rubble on the field, and that means the building is gonna rebuild itself over time. However, it's gonna be always level 1. The spiderlings are, or the works are dead from the lair. Tower guards, they should be easily able to creep this one, no big deal. At the same time, cave pads are being used. The spiderlings are in the range of the fortress and also in the range of the Gonda archers. They are trying to take down the uh, archer range, but I think they won't be able to do that. They are fighting against the archers in a really bad spot. Because they are being shoot, shoot it now from both the sides, from archers, but also from the fortress at the same time. The cave pads are nice, reducing the damage output and the armor of the enemy units. There is one more tunnel coming up for the goblin player at the top side of the map. And the human wood is still remaining on the field, which goblin player might be able to cover later on with his own tainted land. Alright, so these two tunnels are down. They should be starting to rebuild itself over time very soon. Uh, Spider Pit is still level 1 only and one goblin cave on the field so far as a production building from the goblin player in Sauron. Goblin warriors against Sour Guards. Sour Guards, they should be able to win this fight, no big deal. Goblins are. Yes, one of the most cost efficient units in the game, but also one of the most one of the weakest units in the game, definitely. In those 1v1 skirmishes against pretty much every other unit. Our guards on the other side, they are pretty expensive, they cost 400 each. So it makes sense that they are able to win the 1v1 against goblins. 
And then off the west player AOW is gonna now creep the second work layer at the top left side of the map. The spider links, there is another offensive barracks at the bottom right side. This is only level 1, and the spider links are gonna be able to take it down quite fast. The farm is gonna be taken down right after that. There is no protection from the man of the west player, who is looking to get the third creep under his control, the work layer at the right side of the river this time. And he's gonna get so much money and so many power points for free, pretty much. The Vork is following the Spiderlings until the end of the world. What's happening? He was actually following them from this layer until there. And the Spiderlings here, so many of them, guys. Uh, one of them is level 2, the other ones are still only level 1. On the other side, we have a Fisher now coming up for the Goblin player in Tauron. So he's not going for more, uh, for more and multiple Goblin keeps. He's actually gonna try to get those strong units on the field instead. Maybe some Cave Trolls or maybe Half Troll Pikemen. Let's see what he's gonna choose to go for. The stable is coming up for the Man of the West player at the same time. The archer range is still only level 1. Power point wise, he was able to collect 5 power points after the start of the Human Wood. 450 command points available right now for the Man of the West player. On the other side, the Goblin player has 500 command points collected and nearly 5 power points collected as well. And he's actually going for the second Goblin cave at pretty much the same time. Cave Trolls are on their way, they are very expensive units. The creep and the money is secured by the Goblin player which is really nice. But he has to avoid fighting those tower guards from the Men of the West player. The tunnel at the top right side has been saved for now by these goblin archers and goblin warriors. And he has now enough power points to go for either the war chant or the tainted land. Or he can you know skip them pretty much and try to go for the 10 power points instead. Alright, the first cave troll is already on the field. Uh, the same abilities like in Rise of the Witch King, you can choose to find a tree to grab it, you can choose to throw rocks instead. But also you can choose to throw a goblin instead, you know? Just like in Rise of the Witch King. Nothing has changed in terms beside the price. In Rise of the Witch King they cost only 500, here they cost actually 600, so 100 more. The creep at the bottom left side is also gonna be secured by the man of the best player. The troll layer. And yeah, look at the tower guards. They are level 4 now, the soldiers are gonna not get the last hit. The tower guards are almost level 5 now, guys. We have the first hero from the man of the best player on the field and his name is Eomir. The Horse Lord of Rohan and the King of Rohan as well. Remember after Theoden got killed from the Witch King in the movies? Eomer actually became the King right after. Because Theoden, if you remember, his son Theodred was killed in the second movie, in the Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers, at the very beginning. When uh, Theoden was actually under the effect from the Worm Song, from Saruman's servant. The troll has been taken down, Eomir is already level 3 guys, leadership is unlocked to horse lot, which means 35% increased armor for the Norway allied cavalry units, in this case either Gondonites or Rohirrim later on. The stable is level 2, so we might get to see some Rohirrim and one of them is already on the field. On the other side, 600 command points collected for the goblin player though, 650 for the man of the west player, 9 power points available, and we have 2.5 power points collected after the cave pads and the war chant. Uh, and the Man of the West player didn't choose anything just yet. It looks like you want to go for the 10 as soon as possible. Yeah, that's a nice one more combo by the way guys. Warchant and the Cave Pads. Warchant is going to make your unit stronger and Cave Pads is going to make the enemy units weaker. That's going to help you to win those fights. And also the Cave Pads in a situation like this are going to be much more effective. Because not only are they going to be able to deny the leadership from Elmer, But even deny the buff from the Human Wood. And on top of that, they are still able to debuff the enemy units. So it's like a win-win-win situation with the key pads from the Goblin Faction. And the fact that you can pick them up for 5 power points only from your spellbook actually is quite impressive. Theoden is also on the field. Theoden is gonna give you leadership if once he's level 2. Which, by the way, unlike from Eomer, is not only exclusive for the Gondonites or Rohirrim. It works for every single unit. And it is also able to stack with the leadership of Eomer. I mean, the armor doesn't stack, so what will happen is that the units around them are gonna have 25% increased damage, 35% increased armor, we are talking only about Gondonites and Rohirrim in this case, and 25% increased combat experience. Warchan has been used, Barak's level 3 is gonna be taken down. Remember, in BFME 2, unlike in Rise of the Witch King, the Men of the West faction doesn't own the Rebuild in the spellbook, guys. So you have, instead of the Rebuild, you have the Human Wood, you have Heal, and you have the Rallying Call. The troll has to be careful, Eomir and Theoden, they should be able to take him down. And look at this, Theoden is almost level 3 already and level 7 is gonna be the time for the Hormer King of Rohan to shine. 
once he unlocks the glorious charge. Human wood is being used. Hobbits are gonna be summoned right after they are committing now against the fissure. The fissure is gonna be taken down by the power of the hobbits. The gang is here, Merry, Peregrine took, Samwise Gamgee and Frodo Baggins himself. And they were able to take down the building, but the rubble is still remaining on the field, and like mentioned a couple of times, that means the building is gonna rebuild itself over time. But he's not gonna wait for that, he's gonna actually build another fissure instead, in order to get those trolls on the field way faster than waiting for the rubble to rebuild. 5 power points collected after the key pads and war chan and 700 command points available for the goblin player. On the other side, we have 800 command points collected for the Man of the West play AOW Luxus. He was going for the Hobbit allies, which was used a couple of seconds ago to kill the Fissure in combination with the Human Wood. And on top of that, he was almost able to collect another 5 power points, which is quite impressive. Alright, we have some small fights going on left and right. The Spider Links are being mainly used for harassment purposes. I think they can't win against the Rohirrim if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if they can. We have uh, Eome and Theodin moving with the Rohirrim from the top right side. The Spiderlings, yeah, they can't fight against the Rohirrim unfortunately for them. They have to disengage. The stable is level 3, guys. That means, again, every level 3 building in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King is gonna work like a tower. So keep that in mind. Very, very important to actually know that. And they are also gonna be way, way tanky. And I think that's really important to actually go for the upgrades in BFME 2. The fact that your buildings are way easier to be taken down than in Rise of the Witch King uh, kind of forces you to go for the level 2, level 3 upgrades on them. Gonna make it very, very important. On the other side, we have almost 11 power points collected now for the Man of the West player after the Hobbit allies. Each 50 command points, remember, full command points are 1000. Chilop, the Spider Queen, is on the field. Only Samwise Gamgee was able to hurt her. I mean, she didn't even die, remember that. She was able to escape. She got scared by the by the Samwise Gamgee, the brave man, who is for me the real hero in ben in Lord of the Rings. Because let's be honest, Frodo wouldn't be anything with, without him, guys. Frodo would be wearing the ring by the time, and or maybe the Gollum would be able to kill Frodo a long time ago, if uh, you know Samwise Gamgee wouldn't be around. Theoden is level three, which is nice. Uh, level. I mean, level, the, the thing with the heroes in BFME 2 is it's easy to level them up until uh, they are like level 5. Then it's gonna become way harder. The Spiderlings are able to kill another farm. We are getting actually a lot of Rohirrim on the field and now even the captain of Gonzo and his name is Faramir. His, Boromir, uh, his uh, brother Boromir is still remaining in the fortress for now. 13 power points collected. The power points are rising. Scavenger has been chosen by Entauron, the goblin player. Which means whenever he kills enemy units or buildings, he will get money. 24-7 pretty much. Shilob is a very tanky hero. She's already level 4. Instill Taro is act available with level 3. She can be using it now. And she has splash damage. Look how many Rohirrim she's able to hit at the same time. Look at this. And because of the scavenger, you are getting so much money for free. 10 plus 10 resources for each kill on one Rohirrim from the battalion, which is quite impressive. I mean, the money you get from the scavenger is always based on the cost of the building or units or heroes. So, for example, if you kill like Gandalf, you will always get much more money than killing Eomir, for example. Which makes sense. So, it's a percentage, I think, of the cost your opponent was investing to recruit the hero or to build the building. Alright, the tro troll is actually doing a nice job against this uh, Rohirrim. He's not being able to kill them. The terror will be used now from Shiloh. The units are running into different directions. Shilob has to avoid fighting those tower guards, Tom, and the troll has to avoid trampling them in a situation like this. Even though they are getting one-shotted, the half-troll pikemen are nice counter units also to the Rohirrim, and that's why the Man of the West player is now forced to disengage. 750 command points, almost command points kept. Spear troll is being used from Eomir once again, who is level 5. Level 6 is gonna unlock the outlaw leadership, which is gonna be something like the scavenger. Eomir or the units around them, whenever they kill you know, units or buildings, they're gonna get awesome money. And nice attack, nice defense here from the Man of the West player. Shilob was able to survive though, she's almost level 5. Level 6, if I believe, is gonna unlock the Poison Stinger, yes. Uh, paralyzes targeted heroes for 6 seconds and causes the enemy units uh, with the poison to take damage for, three, for 30 seconds, which is nice. 
Okay, so we have a massive army of goblins, uh, spider riders from the spider pits level 2, by the way, now. Fissure is also level 2 to get those half troll uh, pikemen on the field. With level 3, you can end up recruiting the giants, which are pretty much the siege weapons from the goblin faction. Just like the trebuchets from the men of the west faction. Tyrion got killed, actually, I missed that one. But he is returning to the battlefield. Uh, and the farm here is gonna go definitely down. The man of the west player is going now for attack. The Hobbit allies is gonna be available soon, and he was able to collect 17, almost 18 power points on top of that. Full command points now for the man of the west player, guys. Shilob is level 5. One more level is needed to be level 6 for the Poison Stinger. Uh, summon Donatan allies has been chosen now from the man of the west player, which can be used everywhere. Oh, Shilob has to be careful though, she's taking way too much damage. Tunnel is only available with level 7. Oh, the spear throw, but it is just not enough. She was barely able to get away in safety, at least for now. Full command points for men, 800 command points for the man of, uh, for the goblin player in Sauron, sorry. He was able to collect 11 power points after the scavenger. So we can agree that Luxus, the man of the west player, is far, far ahead in terms of power points at least. And also in terms of command points. Yes, full command points, Theoden is on foot chasing down those... After all, Pikeman, I don't know about that. Tyrion is kinda in a bad spot. But luckily there is a reinforcement coming with Rohirrim Arches using the Bombard and Arches from Gonzo plus the Tower Guards. So the attack will be defended by the Men of the West player easily. Remember, Tyrion is offering leadership now because he's level 3. Unlike in Rise of the Witch King, however, in order to get leadership with Tyrion, you need to level him up to level 2 first. In Rise of the Witch King and in BFME 1, Theodin offers you leadership with level 1 already. Shilob is healing up over time. She's almost, you know, half HP already. We are getting some more trolls on the field. Uh, double fissure, by the way, guys. Goblin Cave level 3, Goblin Cave level 3, Spider Pit is level 2. And this fissure is level 2, while this one is only level 1. If also Gorg killed the Goblin King on the field, it's a very small hero. I have to zoom in so you can see him better. Uh, he's like a utility hero in my opinion, more like a sportive hero than a combat hero. It doesn't mean that he's weak, no. He's actually quite strong, but there are just heroes in the game that are made to be strong in a combat. Like, you know, to kill the enemy units or enemy heroes. Like for example, Lures with the Carnage or Brave Master from Aragorn or Gandalf with all his spells. While other heroes like Theodin are made to be a sportive hero. Or Eomer, for example. Yes, you have the spear throw, but your DPS is not the greatest. You are more like offering utility with the outlaw leadership. You have like your leadership for the Gondor Knights or Rohirrim around you. Same goes to Theodian, obviously, with the glorious charge and the leadership. And also, Gorkil the Goblin King is uh, pretty much the same situation. Human Wood is being used for a trample. He's going in. But he has to be careful, though. There are too many units to deal with. Rohirrim are getting slowed down. They are getting poisoned. And they're gonna receive damage over time. You have Skull Totem now being used from Gorkil the Goblin King. Skull Totem means uh, actually more armor, 35% armor, 25% combat experience, armor buff, and reveals the Nerby Shroud. So it's different. Skull Totem in Rise of the Witch King works like a war chant, which means 50% damage, armor, and fear resistant on top of that. So we can agree that the Skull Totem in BFME 2 is way, way weaker than in Rise of the Witch King. But with level 4, he unlocks the leadership, which can stack with the Skull Totem. Then Poison Stinger with level 6, you know, same with Shelob. And once this guy is level 10, he can use the Call from the Deep ability, which is gonna give him the chance to summon 3 Fire Drakes under his control. Shelob is quite damaged, and the Worm will be summoned. Uh, the Donatan allies is available now for the Man of the West player for a long, long time. He was not using them one time so far. Worm needs two hits to kill a level 3 farm, just like in Rise of the Witch King pretty much. The Worm is also dealing crazy amount of DPS against pretty much everything, including the buildings in Rise of the Witch King. I think the Bad Axe is going down now, potentially also with two attacks. One is not enough, because it's level 2. I think even if it would, if it would be level 1, you, know, you will still need two hits. And we have now another hero, and his name is Aragorn, guys, the King of Gondor. The King of the Men. 16 power points collected after the allies of Dunedain and allies of the Hobbits. Full command points now for a long, long time. On the other side, we have 4 power points collected for the Goblin player in Sauron. He has 625 command points available, so he's pretty behind in terms of power points and command points in compared to the Men of the West player AOW Luxus. Alright, but the game isn't over until it's over, guys. Um, 
Everything is possible, we have seen a lot of shenanigans already in the battle for Middle Earth game so far. You, you know, players being behind for the majority of the game and then actually being able to come back and win the game after all, afterwards. So I don't see this game being over any soon. But Aragorn is gonna be hard to deal with for the Goblin player, definitely. I mean, we have Eomir almost level 6, Theoden is also lurking around somewhere, as well as Faramir who is also now level 4. Who can now get mounted and dismounted. Bonding Arrow is a single target, high damage, and uh, causes certain monsters to flee. And yeah, it's pretty much the same situation like in Rise of the Witch King. In Rise of the Witch King, it also slows down the enemy units or hero you are targeting. Gorkil has to be careful. Uh, Ranger Summon has been used now from the Man of the West player. Boromir is also on the field. I feel like every hero but Gandalf is already on the field for the Man of the West player, guys. Yeah, indeed, like, no, Elvin is missing still, Elvin and Gandalf are missing, that's pretty much it. We are getting now a lot of defensive expansions around the fortress. But Aragorn wouldn't care about this one, because he's already level 3. Level 5 is gonna unlock his Anduril passive, which means 10% increased damage for Aragorn and 7% increased movement speed. Gandalf, Hobbit allies will be used as well. He has Bleedmaster available and he has collected already 22 power points, guys, after the Ranger summon. Like, he's 3 power points away now from getting his big earthquake ability unlocked. Boromir is knocking down Gorkil, the Goblin King. He's going ham, he's going to deep though, and he's gonna be taking... No, it was actually Gorkil, the Goblin King's health. Boromir is still quite healthy. I was confused for a second, guys, excuse me. And Gorkil is down. 2 power points away now, which is gonna end up killing all the expansions around the fortress. Full command points for a long time. Untouched economy, level 3 farms left and right, level 3 stable, level 2 archer range, 2 barracks, and he's now going for the blacksmith as well. We have a small fight at the bottom left side. Shirok is gonna hit level 6 at this point. Yeah, Poison Stinger is now unlocked. We hear him, they can't deal with the Spider Queen. Uh, power points are rising, 24 power points collected now. Half a power point away from Earthquake, guys. On the other side, uh, we are getting more and more Rohirrim. He was never actually recruiting any Golden Knights. He was always getting Rohirrim from the beginning. And they are very, very expensive. Because 200 is more than the Golden Knights. 750 are act is actually a high price for normal units. So you are more expensive than the Cave Trolls and the Half Troll Pikemen. And a little bit less expensive than the Mountain Giants. But also more expensive than the Goblin Spider Riders. Way more expensive. 150 difference in terms of resource investment for a normal unit. Is actually pretty significant, guys. Okay, Earthquake is now available for the Man of the West player. We already know what it means. Look at this layout right now for the Goblin player. Yes, everything around the fortress. Can you imagine how effective the Earthquake is going to be in a situation like this? It's gonna hit like an absolute truck, guys. Alright, so we have a small, you know, kind of small fight around this side. But I don't think that these units are gonna be able to achieve too much. Because Man of the West player has just so many more units on the field. I like the way that the Man of the West play is playing it very slow. You know, he's going slow, he's always um, making sure to kill the tunnels first. Full command points now. Uh, I mean, still full command points. And the Goblin player has no chance to actually keep killing those tunnels. He was reviving his Gorkil the Goblin King. It looks like he wanna go for the troll at the top right side. I'm actually curious. Wait a second, I don't wanna miss the Earthquake though, but I missed. Oh no, I missed it. Look at the animation. All the expansions are gunners. All the buildings around the fortress are gunners as well. Now the commitment against the fortress. While Gorkil the Goblin King doesn't care. He's just creeping, for whatever reason, the troll layer at the top right side. While the Goblin player is losing the game. Aragorn with the Blade Master is hitting very hard. 50% increased damage, 50% increased armor. The fortress is down. And the last building, the last... Production building is gone and Sauron has been defeated, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. And yeah, I'm trying to upload more and more videos nowadays. If you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you, if you want to do me a favor, leave a like on this video. i see you next time. And by the way, we are planning a good against evil tournament for Rise of the Witch King right now. And most of the games, actually all of the games, are going to be live streamed on my Twitch channel. Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link for that is going to be in the description down below. If you haven't done it yet, please make sure to follow me there as well. I would love to see you guys in the next live stream. Again, thanks for watching. i see you next time. Take care. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace.